Welcome everyone to episode two of Historical Reviews, where we review media, whether it be box sets, CDs, or DVDs. And in this episode, we are going to review dun, 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 Walt Disney Treasures. In the first episode, I reviewed the CD box set of Disneyland music, and I thought, oh, why not do more Disney-related stuff? So I decided to dig into my other Disney stuff and review these Walt Disney Treasures. And the first one in the wave one is Mickey Mouse in Living Color. Well guys, here are the four box sets. Here is the close-up of the tin box. Front side, then back side right here. Again, the number out of 150,000. We open it up, same deal plastic case close-up of that right here taking it out open it and then here we have the band concert short on both the disc and the little lithograph just showing it right like that and it says right here Mickey Mouse's original name was Mortimer until Walt Disney's wife, Lillian, convinced him to change it to Mickey because it sounded cuter. And then for those who don't know this, the original voice for Mickey Mouse was Walt Disney himself. People have said that Mickey Mouse was Walt Disney's kind of his alter ego, kind of a go-getter that's very happy. Second disc. Brave Little Taylor. Open it up. Same deal with this one. This is what we're here to see. You open this. Same deal. Walt Disney right there. Talking about it here. Showing a picture in living color. Mickey Mouse. And then right here shows... All the shorts that's in this collection the band concert mickey's garden on ice pluto's judgment day so on and so forth and they also separated by year as you notice so right here it says 1935 shorts 1936 shorts through the mirror mickey circus mickey's elephants mickey's grand opera now this short mickey's polo team it's one of my favorites because it shows caricatures of classic hollywood stars like charlie chaplin harpo marx the Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. I would recommend this one out of all of them. 1937 has having Hawaiian holiday, Moose Hunters, The Worm Turned so far. And 1938, Mickey's Parrot, Boat Builders, The Whalers. You get the picture. Let's go check it out on the DVD player. Now let's pop in Mickey Mouse in Living Color, disc one. The other ones, just like this one, there's the facade of the curtain opening it up. I'm here at the corner of Mickey Avenue and Dopey Drive. At Mickey Mouse in living color. So this is how the main menu looks like. Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse A Living Color. You can play all. They separated by year, 1935, 1936. Parade of Award nominees, captions, and the intro if you want to see again. So let's go into 1935. So as you see right here, we have the shorts, the band concert, Mickey's Garden, On Ice, Pluto's Judgment Day, Mickey's Fire Br Brigade, and Pencil Tests. So let's click on On Ice. Let's fast forward through that. So as you see right here, this iconic short is such high quality that every time I rewatch it, I just think 
this collection was a definite, definite must for me. So let's move on to the next page. So right here we have 1936, Through the Mirror, Mickey Circus, Mickey's Elephant Garden, Mickey's Grand Opera, and Mickey's Polo Team. Now I'm going to click Mickey's Polo Team because that's actually one of my favorite Mickey Mouse shorts of all time. And I'll tell you why. So here we fast forward it, Mickey's Polo Team. Now people say that this is supposed to be a parody of Walt Disney. I don't know if that's true or not, but just wanted to let you know that. Mickey, you see Mickey there, and Walt Disney was actually an avid polo player. There you see Shirley Temple in the crowd. There's Goofy. Fast forward that a little bit. Now this is why my this is why this short's one of my favorites. Here's Stan Laurel parading with this horse. There you see Greta Garbo, W.C. Fields, Harold Lloyd, Eddie Cantor. And there you see Oliver Hardy going with a horse that kind of comically looks similar to him. Now this is my favorite. Harpo Marks. You gotta love Harpo. Going with a ostrich with a hat. And of course Charlie Chaplin. The horse is imitating his kind of famous walk with his cane. We got more parties. And there we have Clark Gable with Clarabelle. And how can you not like Clark Gable? Press forward that. Again, and then what I found funny about this short recently when I went to Disneyland, they were actually playing this on Main Street. So that definitely made this short even better in my eyes. So that's part of the rest. Pretty funny and iconic if you ask me. Alright, let's go to the more 1936. Look what we have. We got Alpine Climbers, Moving Day, Mickey's Rival, and Orphan's Picnic. I'll just give you a taste of Mickey's Rival. Just fast forward that one. Just to show you one of the shorts that are on this car disc. This disc is actually... Cartoon, I mean, rather. It's pretty funny, too. All of them are, are hilarious. Definitely a set to watch with your parents and kids. Classic, classic Mickey Mouse. My menu. I'll click on the Parade of Award nominees. Just to fast forward. Here's a real treat for Disney buffs and old movie aficionados alike. A short animated film that was specially created to be shown at the Academy Awards Banquet in 1932. Depicting the various acting nominees of the year. So that's what Leonard Malton said there. This is for any film buff. They showed this for the Academy Awards. So that's where we go. Oh, there you go. Captions. And that is for the first disc. Let's go on to the second disc. On to the final disc. Mickey Mouse in Living Color. Da da da! Curtains open up to disc two. So, as the previous disc also, it has a play all button for all the cartoons. 1937, 1938, gallery options. I meant gallery and captions, my bad. Mickey in Living Color with Leonard Malton. So let's click on 1937. So in this one we have Hawaiian Holiday, Moose Hunters, The Worm Turns, Magician Mickey, Mickey's Amateurs, Clock Cleaners, and Lonesome Ghosts. Now let's go click on Lonesome Ghosts. Just to give you guys a taste again of the quality of this disc. 
Lonesome Ghost is actually is actually one of my favorite shorts actually. It's pretty funny, it's pre-Ghostbusters. The first time I actually watched that short was on a House of Mouse Halloween. Okay, now there's a button here that lets you go to 1938 without having to go back to the main menu. So in 1938, we have Mickey's Parrot, Boat Builders, the Whalers, Mickey's Trailer, and Brave Little Taylor. Let's click. Let's click on Brave Little Taylor because it's a, another iconic short. So fast forward again, just to give you guys a taste of how it looks like. Pretty high quality again, and the colors are very vibrant as well. If I didn't mention that before. Okay, let's go to the main menu. Go into the gallery. And right here shows, again, posters, a mix of them, and sketches with storyboards. Here's a Mickey Mouse one. The band concert. There's Horace and Clarabelle. So again, I, I would have to reiterate this again. This collection is a definite must for anybody who loves Disney, who loves animation, and who loves film history in general. Because not only you're seeing the progression of the Disney animation from the early days on to before Snow White was released, or in this case, a little after, but it gives you a sense of how the animators truly cared about the craft in the 30s and how Walt Disney really was pushing for his crew to improve. So that's the end of disc two. Well guys, I hope you liked exploring Mickey Mouse in living color. Let's go on to the next Walt Disney Treasures, which is Silly Symphonies. Let's go! Here's a close-up of the beautiful box set and the back side of it too, having flowers and trees. The first color short film to actually win an Academy Award. Let's open up the box set. You open it up. Same deal as with the other two. Nice plastic case. You open it up here. And then you open it up there. And oh, look at that. A little lithograph of flowers and trees. And having the little trivia here, as it says, the very first Silly Symphony was Flowers and Trees. It premiered on July 30th, 1932 at Gromage Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Oh, and by the way, audience, if you haven't seen the rest of my channel, I actually made a Hollywood Boulevard video talking about the history of the Gromage Chinese. So you should go check it out. Back to this. So you put that down there. Flowers and Trees disc. The second disc being the Ugly Duckling. Nice quality discs. Put it down. Starting out with the same picture of with Walt Disney. Silly Symphonies right here. And then having a list of all of the shorts in here. I could just pause that a little bit right there for you guys so you can kind of get a look at it. But I could also read it if you guys want. Fables and Fairy Tales, Mother Goose Melodies, Babes in the Woods, Lullaby Land, The Tortoise and the Hare, and so on. Favorite Characters, Three Little Pigs, Big Bad Wolf, Three Little Wolves, The Wise Little Hen. And then Leonard's Picks, The Grasshopper and the Ants, The Tortoise and the Hare, The Flying Mouse. All of these cool shorts on the first disc. And the second disc, pause that too. Accent on Music, the famous skeleton dance. For those of you who haven't seen it, this collection is definitely for you. The China Plate, Egyptian Melodies, Flowers and Trees also on this. Nature on the Screen, Birds of a Feather, the Be Be I'm sorry about that. The Busy Beavers, Just Dogs, 
Leonard's Picks, Skeleton Dance, Flowers and Trees, Music Land, Ugly Duckling of 1931 and 1939. And here are the special features. The Song of the Silly Symphonies, Silly Symphony Souvenirs. So let's pop in this disc. Now, here's the first disc of Silly Symphonies, and let's pop this in. I'll just fast forward that one so we don't have to see the whole thing. Now for the Silly Symphonies discs, they separate it of what kind of shorts they are, meaning maybe either theme or what kind of characters are in it of the cartoons. So we can explore first with the Fables and Fairy Tales option. So as you see in this one, Fables, Tortoise and the Hare, The Country Cousin, Babes in the Woods, and Elmer Elephant. I'm just going to show you guys the tortoise and the hare just to see the quality of it i'm just gonna fast forward through it just to show you guys too i don't want to get copyright stricken after all so you fast forward and you see pretty high diff quality if you ask me this is actually one of my favorite shorts even though it's a common cartoon but the way that disney animated their characters in the early 30s they had a unique sense of cutesy designs different than any other animation studio at the time. So there's the other one, just so you can see which shorts are supplied in this di in this disc. That's more. So here's more in that same category, fables and fairy tales. The Flying Mouse, The Golden Touch, The Robber Kitten, Lullaby Land, and Mother Goose Melodies. There's those. And at any time, you guys could comment in the comment section if you have a favorite short of these or which ones you have seen or haven't seen. Now let's go back to the main menu and I'll show you the other section. So before I go to this next section, I'll just read out all of them that we have. So as we explored first, fables and fairy tales. The next one is favorite characters, then Leonard's picks. So let's go into favorite characters. We click on there. And here we have the wise little hen. Three Little Pigs, The Big Bad Wolf, Three Little Wolves, and Toby Tortoise Returns. So let's click on the Wise Little Hand because this is actually the first appearance that Donald Duck appears as Donald Duck. So let's kind of click on that. So I'll fast forward that just to show you guys how this cartoon looks like. So there is the first Donald Duck. I'll go back actually a little bit you missed him there's donald duck being donald duck as he looks very different than he does today but hey gotta start somewhere right <laughs> so let's fast forward that donald and just show you the rest of the cartoon but again pretty high quality for this set as if you ask me again just one more time Here's the rest of the cartoons in this section. So let's go back to the main menu. And let's go to Leonard's picks. Now, what did he pick? Click on that. Oh, actually, the three little pigs, the flying mouse, Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod, the tortoise and the hare, the grasshopper and the ants. So it appears as that Leonard put these specifically to show which ones are his favorites. So I could click on from this section. Let's click on wink and blink and nod just to show you guys how it looks like from this one. So by the time they made wink and blink and nod, this is when Disney already had crafted how their shorts look like and everything fast forward okay let's go back to the main menu and it also has captions just in case 
So that's the first disc of Silly Symphonies. Let's move on to the second one. Now let's pop in Silly Symphonies, volume two, or disc two, rather. So them going with the similar facade as the first disc. This one we have nature on screen, accent on music, and special features along with Leonard's pics and caption. So let's start off with the nature on the screen. And I forgot to mention this in the last disc, but they also have an option if you don't want to select an individual short, you can play them all right here. Just, just want to let you guys know that. So let's start with nature on screen. Click on the nature on screen. And here we have the shorts Mother Pluto, Peculiar Penguins, The Old Mill, Funny Little Bunnies, and The Ugly Duckling. So let's go, actually I'm going to click with The Old Mill because that one won the Studio and Academy Award. So let's fast forward that one just to see. Oh, and right here it shows also. A fully restored Academy Award winning classic. So let's just fast forward how that one looks like, just to give you guys a taste of the short on here. So they're going to be kind of short, obviously, but let's go more. And then we have Ugly Duckling 1931 version. As you saw on the previous page, it had 1938. Father, no Father Noah's Ark, Birds of a Feather, The Busy Beavers, and Just Dogs. And let's click on Just Dogs. Just because it says dogs in the title. I don't know if you guys noticed, this one is in black and white. So you are going to see, because it is Silly Symphony and they started in the late 20s, before they transitioned into fully color, you'll see both black and white and color shorts. So I'll just fast forward this one just to show you guys. And I don't know if you guys noticed also, but just look at how much the Disney Studio changed with their animation quality from this one to the old mill. It's more of a rubbery animation, but regardless, it's still entertainment. So go back to the main menu. And this one's accent on film. So let's click on the accent on film. So in this one, we have music land, the China plate, Egyptian melodies, flowers and trees, the cookie carnival, the skeleton dance and wilding cafe. So Skeleton Dance is pretty iconic, and Flowers and Trees is obviously pretty iconic, known as the first cartoon to have full-on color, at least in America. So let's click on that, going with the same facade, because this short also won an Academy Award. So let's fast forward that. Oh, something else I wanted to note before fast forwarding the rest of it. So before when United Artists would distribute the shorts because Mickey Mouse was such a huge hit and Walt Disney had this idea of silly symphonies, the only way that United Artists agreed to distribute these shorts was to add Mickey Mouse on it. So that's why you see Mickey Mouse presents a Walt Disney silly symphony. Just wanted to tell you guys that little, little extra trivia. So you fast forward it. And then you see, again, the high quality of the cartoon in this collection. This is why I recommend anybody who's a huge Disney fan to buy it, just to see how much the company has grown from the late 20s into the 30s into today, just to see how much they evolved. So back to the main menu. Again, just to show you guys the shorts that are here. Let's go back to the main menu. Supplemental features, let's click on here. The Song of the Silly Symphonies and Silly Symphonies Souvenirs. So let's click on the first one. I'm here with Richard Sherman. The man oh, look at that. It shows Richard Sherman and him giving his his two cents about the Silly Symphony music as well. Let's just fast forward it. Everybody loves good old Richard Sherman. Going through the different kinds of music as well. Just giving his little piece playing along with some of them as well
Okay, and let's go to Silly Symphony Souvenirs. Click on that. Nowadays, when a new Walt Disney animated feature opens in theaters, and this one, as you see, he's in the Walt Disney Archives. He's just with Dave Smith, who he recently passed away, but he was for a, a number amount of years head of the Disney Archives. And right here, he's showing a little collection of items that they have related to Silly Symphonies. So again, I'll just fast forward that right here for you guys. Disney definitely in the early 30s was the master of selling merchandise along with their films. And he definitely perfected that since the beginning, as you can see with all these silly symphony things. So here are the gallery, just like the first two, they show pictures. Just mostly storyboards of how it looked like. So, for example, I'll show you this one. Silly Symphony, little cartoons. Storyboard. Tortoise and the Hare. And there's a little tortoise. Go back to the menu. And that is back to the menu. Leonard's Picks. I'll just show you what's in this one. The Ugly Duckling, both versions. Music Land, Flowers and Trees, and The Skeleton Dance. Of course, these two iconic ones. And that one is it for Silly Symphonies Disc 2. Welcome back, everyone. Let's move on to the third treasure in our Walt Disney Treasure Line. And the name of it is Disneyland USA. Let's go open it up right now. One. So here's just a close-up of the tin box set in the back side here. And I like to note for the first four that came out, they had these numbers because they made a certain amount of each of these sets. And as the sets went on, they, you would notice that these numbers are non-existent on the box set. So when you're trying to buy your own copy of any of these, just look out for this number because the, some have them and some don't. But let's just open it, shall we? So when you open it, you're gonna see the plastic case. It's easy for me to do it like this. There's the tin case like that. You open it, and then you see that each of these Walt Disney Collections box sets, they include a little reproduction art piece from whatever topic they're talking about. So for this one, it's Disneyland. And here's a vintage Autotopia photo, and it talks about a little trivia fact on each of these cards. So this one says, Autopia was one of the original park attractions when Disneyland opened its gates in 1955. So I thought that was pretty cool. There's that little thing. And also each of these treasures includes a little booklet to kind of tell you an overview of what each of the DVD includes. So here's like a nice picture of Walt right there. You just flip it. It just tells you a little bit what is included, nice photos supplying with it. So this one's neat. This one includes the Disneyland story, Dateline Disneyland for the disc one. And disc two, it's Disneyland After Dark, Disneyland 10th Anniversary Show. And each of these has their own kind of special features. And what I... What I recommend people buying these, especially if they're a Disney fan, is because these kind of material are not really that common on DVDs. So when you kind of own this, you're like owning a piece of the Disney history, especially since Disney Plus doesn't include everything that's in the Disney library. At least you're having some nostalgic Disney. So here's like a little just booklet of DVDs that were released at the time and I'll just give you guys a close-up 
of how the discs look like. Autotopia. He opens the second disc. The Matterhorn. Let's take a look at the DVDs, shall we? Now let's play the DVD, show and tell. Now this is the trailer for all these Walt Disney treasures. This was the world of Walt Disney. From here, he reached out to touch us with his spirit, inspire us with his imagination, excite and entertain us with his vision. Now, in the year he would have celebrated his 100th birthday, Walt Disney's spirit continues to captivate us. His legacy endures in a very special collection. I'm proud to be your host for Walt Disney Treasures. An all-new collection of four limited editions, each individually numbered. Enjoy the fun-filled antics of silly symphonies and Mickey Mouse in living color. Take a nostalgic tour of Disneyland USA and journey into the wilderness with legendary frontiersman Davy Crockett. Let Walt Disney share his vision and his greatest treasures with you. Walt Disney Treasures, exclusively on Disney DVD. Disneyland was Walt's dream, and it reflects Walt's vision. You'll see that for yourselves in these four programs that originally aired on network television. TV played a vital role in establishing Disneyland. By revisiting these shows, we can trace not only the history of the park, but the way it was presented to the public. And who better to serve as our tour guide to the happiest place on earth than Walt himself? All who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past, and here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America, with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. Thank you. This is how the main menu looks like. As you see, there's Dateline Disneyland, the Disneyland story. We could click on how Dateline Disneyland looks like. It starts with Leonard Malton giving a small introduction about it. And I could go through it just to show you guys how the program looks like. So this is basically the opening broadcast when Disneyland opened. As you can see, Art Link letter talking to Ron Reagan and talking to various people in the park. So if you guys are a big Disneyland fan and want to see how it looked like on opening day, I would recommend this DVD set because it shows you how the park used to look like on opening day 1955. Let's go through it. There's Buddy Epson and Davy Crockett. And then the Disneyland story, click on that, just show you a brief preview of what that is. 
talks about the mini story of how Disneyland came to be. Background, his big map, storyboard sketches. David Crockett. Everything that Walt Disney thought how Disneyland should look like. Ventureland. And it goes briefly through how with their sketches that they made how it's going to come to look like in the parks. Well, I hope they gave you guys a brief intro to what disc one includes. Now let's move on to disc two. Now let's play the second disc. It has a similar opening to the first disc, but this time there is the program to Disneyland. Now this one celebrates the 10th anniversary of the opening of Disneyland. So let's see how it looks like. Right here we have our tour guide giving a brief showing of some of the new projects of Disneyland that they're going to have. Mark Davis, them working on Haunted Mansion before Haunted Mansion actually was opened. And Pirates of the Caribbean as well. That's right, anything's possible in Disneyland. Well, here we are, back where we started. And we have about 10 seconds to get down to Disneyland for the big anniversary celebration. You think we can make it? If we have some help. Pink! Pink, how about putting your pixie dust to work and getting us down to Disneyland in five seconds? All the characters of the Magic Kingdom are gathering for the 10th anniversary celebration. The rails were laid around the perimeter of the park and the E.P. Ripley given the trial run. My favorite thing to see about classic Disneyland is just how it used to look like and how much things have changed and how much things have remained the same. As you see here, the Jungle Cruise. Little animatronics. In the Tiki Room. Mark Twain and Knight, and that's kind of just a preview of how well, this program is. To tell you, John. Now let's move on to the second one on this disc, which is Disneyland After Dark. When this program first aired on April 15th, 1962, it had been some time since Walt took his viewers to Disneyland. Even so, he knew there had to be something special to warrant an entire hour in the park. Now in this one, this is actually a pretty special episode because it has Louis Armstrong singing at the Disneyland park. Walt Disney's just trying to join the celebration, but he's always caught up with people trying to get his autograph. 
We have Annette Funicello singing with the band. Now, if only Disneyland had more of this nighttime entertainment. Right, folks? That's just a brief preview of what this disc is. And let's go back to the main menu. Now, this disc also has a special features, so let's explore that as well. It has a gallery of photographs. I'll just show you some of the pictures that this disc has. So as you see, it has the posters of some of the main attractions. I'll just click on one. So you have Alice in Wonderland, Tomorrowland, and here's another one, Tomorrowland, the Autotopia, and Frontierland. Let's go back. Oh, don't know why I did that. Back to the special features. And the other one that we got is the Magic Kingdom and the Magic of Television. Disneyland was more than an amusement park in Walt's imagination. He saw it as a tribute to Americana and an embodiment of the American dream. Let's go through this. This video is a kind of feedback from Leonard Malton what, what was going on at the time and to give more of a historical context of Disneyland, everything like that. This is the main menu. And now let's go on to Davy Crockett. Welcome back, guys. We're on to already our fourth treasure in the Walt Disney Treasure Line, which is Davy, Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier. Now, on to Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett was a popular 1950s TV show and became a pop culture icon. And here is the box set for it. This is actually a special box set because it includes the entire televised series. So let's open it. Here's the back side before we open it. It just gives a little intro to what's inside of who is Davy Crockett. You open it up and just like the Disneyland one it has its own DVD case open that just a close-up of the DVD and a nice picture of Fess Parker in the front there you open it up and look what we have. Two discs. Fess Parker, first one, disc one. Disc two. Has a little booklet. Same thing like the Disneyland one. Just kind of like what they sold at the time. And you could order it. Now this is good. I really like this little mini poster because you could have it framed and have it on display for your DVD. Now, let's kind of explore what's inside the DVD. So you open up the little book. Nice picture, Walt, because they're introducing this whole series as a whole. So you open that. Just showing Davy Crockett, how much Davy Crockett has made Disney what it was in the 50s and here it is disc one it shows david crockett indian fighter david crockett goes to congress and david crockett at the alamo disc two david crockett's keelboat race david crockett and the river pirates and nice special features where they're interviewing fess parker and ta talking about the david crockett craze and there's a photo right there and let's go actually play this dvd now, let me give a show and tell of Davy Crockett Disc 1.
opening of Davy Crockett. The curtains opening up. And here's Leonard Malton giving his own introduction about the Davy Crockett Studios. Now here is the main menu of the Davy Crockett Disc 1. It's playing the theme song of Davy Crockett, so let me just click on Adventures. Davy Crockett, Indian Fighter, the first one. Davy Crockett goes to Congress, and Davy Crockett at the Alamo. So I'm just gonna have one of them playing, just so you guys get a little taste of what Davy Crockett looks like on this disc and the quality of it. This was the show that started it all. On the evening of December 15, 1954, the Disneyland TV show used one of its four main themes, Frontierland, to bring us a colorful figure from American history. Now, let's see. I just see it's in color on this disc. And something else that you notice, it's, in my opinion, it's really good quality for an early 2000s DVD. So they probably restored this disc f when they released this set. And that was the first episode. Let's move on to the second disc so you know what's on the second disc. Now let's move on to disc two. Now here is the Davy Crockett opening for disc two. So let's click on adventures. And the two episodes they have here are Davy Crockett's keel boat race and Davy Crockett and the River Pirates. I'm just going to play the first episode just to give you guys a taste of the quality of the second disc. When this show premiered on November 16th, and mind you, each of these episodes that they're showing on the disc, they have a little intro to Lerna Malton, just kind of giving a kind of history of the disc and where Davy Crockett was his point of time, which I thought was pretty nice. It starts with Walt Disney actually talking about Davy Crockett right here. Again, I would say it's pretty high quality if you ask me. So let's go back to the main menu. Mike Fink, who's irresistible. And let's go back to the special features. So the Davy Crockett craze is basically a little documentary of how popular the Davy Crockett fan base was. So we could click on that. I could give you guys a little taste of what that looks like. If you want to talk about the Davy Crockett show. So it's a commentary video along with showing clips of why Davy Crockett was so popular in the 50s. Let's click on this one, a conversation with Fess Parker. And Fess Parker, as we all know, Hello, stars Mike. as Davy Crockett. Here so here, Lerna Malton is actually talking with Fess Parker and his career as Davy Crockett.
And then just like the Disneyland one, each of these Walt Disney treasures has a gallery to show you photographs. So for example, this one, it'll show Walt Disney holding a Davy Crockett journal or Bill Walsh and screenwriter Tom Blackburn talking about Davy Crockett there. And here's Walt Disney with Fess Parker as well. Just to give you guys a taste of what kind of pictures they show on here. And there's the disc two of Davy Crockett. If you guys are interested in purchasing any of these box sets, I can tell you guys how much I paid for them and how much they're going for either on eBay or Amazon or whatever place you want to buy them. They used to sell them at Costco years ago, probably in the early 2000s. Yeah, around the early to mid 2000s. But unfortunately, because people don't really buy DVDs anymore, these are starting to get hard to come by. So for this one, I've seen it go for between $20 to $25. That's how much I paid for it, around $20. Same thing with the Davy Crockett, between $20 to $25. I think I got it for like $15 or $18 because these two are the more common ones. For some reason, the Silly Symphony one, this one goes for more expensive. I was able to buy it for around $30 to $33, but some people sell it for as much as $75. I don't understand why, because from the first wave, but that's how much certain people are selling it for. And this one, also the Mickey Mouse Volume 1 Living Color, is also on the cheap side, around $20 to $25. I think I bought it for like $15 to $20. Let me know if you guys have any of these box sets down in the comments below. Well guys, we reached the end of the episode. I wanted to thank you again for watching with me. And please join me in the next episode where we talk about my other box set collections. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.